Hi guys, this is Drew Brashler with Northridge Community Church, and I am wanting to show you guys a video of how to take a normal USB drive, uh, four gigabytes or less, um, and turn this into a USB drive that can update the firmware inside of your Behringer X32. Uh, also communicate to it for saving um, audio directly off of the USB recorder um, and also saving your scenes onto it as well. So the best type of USB drives to get for the Behringer X32 is four gigabytes or less. And we need to format this in a FAT format. And so basically, I'm gonna show you guys how to you make this a quote unquote bootable USB drive, um, which uh, has other purposes for you as well, such as installing Windows um, directly off of these, but there's a whole bunch of uh, different things that you can do. So. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, um, if you do not have a USB drive, uh, go ahead and open up your internet browser and go to newegg.com, so N-E-W-E-G-G.com, and go into the search bar and type 4GB USB drive, enter. And then we're going to go ahead and press sort by and most reviews, that usually pulls up the best USB drives in this size. And we're gonna go ahead and scroll down for in the first Real thing, and there it is. SanDisk Cruiser 4 gigabyte flash drive for $5.29. So pick up one of those, pick up a flash drive from Target, you know, wherever you want, or if you have a couple of these laying around, just find one. So once we have it, go ahead and plug it into your computer. I'm not going to show you guys that on the video camera. I hope you guys can do that yourself. All right, so once you do that, and then you are going to go down to the start menu down here. And right here, we are going to search for CMD. And we'll see it right here. And you're going to right click on this and say run as administrator. So you'll do that. And then it'll pop up saying, do you want to make the following changes? And you'll, then you'll click yes. Sorry for the overexposure there. All right, and so once we are here, we are going to type in disk, D-I-S-K, part, P-A-R-T, all one word. Press enter. Uh, on my computer, this takes a while because I have a lot of disks, so I'm sorry, you'll have to wait for one second. Hope all of you guys are enjoying your X32s, by the way. I definitely am. The one thing I love about the X32 is it can be as simple as you want it or as totally advanced as you want it. All right, so there we go. We are now in disk part. So you can see it as it says disk part and then one of those cool little symbols. So what we're gonna do is we're going to type in list space disk. And so then press enter. And now we can see all of the disks that we have plugged into the computer. I have a lot. Um, and so we're going to look for the correct size. So I have 465 gigabytes, 111 gigabytes, blah, blah, blah. And down here at the bottom, we can see that it says 3824 megabytes. Now, a four gigabyte USB drive is not technically four gigabytes or 4,000 megabytes. Um, it, there's a whole bunch of math that goes into it. So it's pretty much around there. So if you want to, you can look inside of the Windows uh, Explorer and find that. But in our case, it's listed right here. So 3,824 megabytes. So that is rounded to four gigabytes. So that is our disk. So we want to look at the disk number. So we can see that it is listed as disk eight. So now what we're going to do is we're going to type in select space disk space eight. Now, if your USB drive is listed as disk three or disk one, you will want to type in the correct number. So do not follow my number. Type in your number that you find that's listed in here. So select disk eight, enter. And so it's going to select that disk. Now it says disk eight is now the selected disk. Now we are going to type in clean. Now before you press enter, if there's anything on your disk that you want to save, uh, take it off the disk now because this will format the drive and leave it uh, clean. Um, so once we type in clean, we press enter. It will now clean the disk and it says disk part succeeded in cleaning the disk. Now we are going to type in create pro partition primary. So create partition primary. 
and then press enter. And then it will say, uh, disk part succeeded in creating the spe specified partition. Now we will type in select partition one. So select space partition space one. And then we will press enter. And so now we have partition one is selected and we are now going to type in active. So A-A-C-T-I-V-E, and that will make that partition active. Now what we're going to do is we're going to format this in a FAT32 type format. So we're going to type in format space FS, which is file structure for all you nerds out there, equals sign FAT32. So format space FS equals sign FAT32. Press enter. This will take a little bit um, and you will be able to watch it. It says 1% completed, 2%. So obviously if you have a smaller USB drive, it will go faster. Uh, if you have a larger USB drive, it will take a little bit longer. But in the meantime, while we're sitting here, watching this little 8% thing go up, um, I'm definitely enjoying my X32. I get a lot of questions of, uh, you know, how's the faders feel? Uh, how's the audio quality? Uh, we had a Allen and Heath um, ML4048 channel board uh, before. It was a beautiful analog board and um, very large, 192 pounds. Um, and the X32 blew me away with the sound quality. It is definitely by far uh, one of the clearest uh, sounding boards in and out. Um, I love it. And the, um, the fact that it has flying faders uh, totally kills the uh, Studio Live. Um, you know, with the Studio Live, in a volunteer situation like at my church, I find that the Studio Live with the... Uh, they have the iPad interface um, with the Studio Live, but if you adjust something on your iPad, uh, you when you get back to the actual physical board, you have to press a button and then move the faders up or down to um, the equivalent that it was at on the iPad before you can actually take control of that fader. And uh, I just think that is super, super complex, um, especially in a volunteer situation. Um, and I can just imagine that you're getting feedback and you can't control that one fader that's feeding back until you match it and it's just it's a you know that's just disastrous in my in my mind so i love that the x32 has uh movable faders on top of that um the ability to save all the scenes uh is wonderful so i'm able to black out all of my channels for uh some of my volunteers um for like our women's ministry the only things that they use is the computer for music and the um the audio from a microphone so they have three faders that are uh open uh all the rest of the faders are blacked out on little uh scribble strips um, so when the sound tech from their ministry comes up and looks at the board, they just pull up their scene uh, and then bam, they have their two uh, music faders and their single microphone. Um, but the board is, uh, haven't had any issues with it. Um, Behringer is very good about releasing uh, new things, uh, especially with the apps that they came out with. Um, you know, they, they were really listening to the people that are using their products, which is awesome. Um, in a, for instance, one of my, my video on the iPad app was uh, kind of complaining that they didn't have a tap delay uh, on any of the delay effects. And uh, in their most recent update of that, uh, they now released a tap delay. So they really listen to everyone, which is awesome. Doing a lot of blabbering. 78%. Sorry this is taking so long, guys. You could skip a part, skip ahead a couple minutes. 82. 83. I haven't had any, uh, any of my volunteers complain about learning the board. Uh, I do find that if somebody has a general understanding of how an analog console works, uh, with adjusting EQ and adjusting, uh, you know, aux sends and everything like that, that they can come to the X32 and pretty much learn uh, how to use the board within about an hour. Um, I'm, I'm blown away by taking guys who, you know, have always just done uh, sound on 
uh, say like a karaoke uh, place, and they came and, and learned the whole board in 30 minutes, um, and now he's uh, running it by himself, which is awesome. All right, now we're at 100%. So a little autoplay thing, depending on your computer, will pop up. Says we have removable di removable disk K, so that's neat. And so. Once that's done, uh, you can, um, depending on your computer, it might not assign a drive letter. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So all we have to do is just type in assign. So A-S-S-I-G-N, press enter, and then that will put it with a new drive letter, which in our case is now J. And we can close that. And then in here, we can type exit. So E-X-I-T, exit and then it will exit out a disk partition and then we can close uh, this window leaving disk part and now we're back onto the C Windows System 32 so now you can close this now let's go ahead and go over to Behringer's website so B-E-H-R-E-N-G-E-R dot com press enter and scroll down to the X32 click it go scroll down to where it says downloads you'll click that and then we will go and find firmware update. Now you'll want to look for the newest update. In this case, it's 1.13, which was released in February. Um, but this is in a chronological order. So when they release uh, 1.14, it'll be at the top. Um, so we can press Agree and Download. So that'll download that. And show in folder. All right. So down here once this finishes there we go now we can see x32 firmware so go ahead and uh, extract that to a folder and double click into it and so we can see that there's one file in here dcp underscore core uh, fs underscore 1.13 dot update now uh, if you are updating the firmware on your board make sure that there is not a previous uh, firmware still on that. So if you were upgrading from 1.12 to 1.13, uh, make sure that on your USB drive you have 1.12 deleted. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and copy. Find our removable disk, in our case it's J, and paste. Bam! It's done. Now all you have to do is take out your USB drive from your computer, and now we have a fat formatted USB drive that can update the console uh, as far as the firmware goes. Also, you can save all your scenes to it. And also, you can record directly from the USB recorder, uh, which is a stereo uh, thing, by the way. So take this, plug it into your USB port on the X32, turn it on, and you will watch your firmware be updated. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post below or send me a message. And um, otherwise, I'll be uh, making some more videos of actually mixing uh, on the console here pretty soon. Uh, finally got my laptop working uh, with Reaper, uh, which is a great uh, kind of uh, less expensive multi-track uh, recording um, software. Uh, anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, get that hooked up to my X32 here in the next couple weeks and make some videos of like how to mix drums, um, you know, getting, getting the right sounds and also kind of showing you guys how I have my board set up um, and actually physically how I set it up while music is going. So uh, anyway, thanks guys and I hope you have a good day.